Do you remember what your life was like before the internet? Well, my guest says something that's happening now will have a greater impact on us and our economy than the internet, and that's artificial intelligence, or AI. Today, AI is predicting when driverless cars should break and what to, what online items we should buy next, and even just shipping them to your house. And soon, AI will play a key part in diagnosing disease, hiring our employees, and identifying fraud. So says economist Avi Goldfarb. He's the co-author of Prediction Machines. He's also Ellison Professor of Marketing at the Rotman School of Management and Chief Scientist at the Creative Destruction Lab. Uh, it is great to have you here. Thanks so much. Thank you. Great book. Congratulations. We'll start there. Okay. Thanks very much. Um, I want to start with why you wrote the book and we'll kind of get into some of the mechanics of it. But what were you trying to do with this? What were you trying to show people? Um, so we, uh, my co-authors and I help run the Creative Destruction Lab, which is a program to help science-based startup scale at the University of Toronto. And we started seeing these companies calling themselves AI companies really right from the beginning in 2012. And um, I thought that was interesting, artificial intelligence. That sounded exciting and frightening. And uh, what we decided to dig into was what did this really mean? And over time, we realized it wasn't really about intelligence per se. It was about a particular aspect of intelligence. It was about prediction. Mm -hmm. And so is AI is, you talk about here about prediction. Um, prediction gets automated and prediction gets cheap. Probably my, maybe I'm just a geeky, yeah. I like econ uh, economic things, but yeah. you have a chapter in here called Cheap Changes Everything. And it does. And tell, and just tell us a bit about that. So think about, think about your computer. Think yeah. about what your computer actually does. It seems like your computer does all sorts of wonderful things. But actually, your computer only does one thing. Your computer does arithmetic. But it turns out it does arithmetic so well and so cheaply that it turns out arithmetic is useful for a whole bunch of things that you didn't even think about it as arithmetic. Yeah, we know you, know, you use your computer for accounting, or you use your computer for um, calculations. And, and those were obviously arithmetic. But it turns out that when arithmetic is cheap, we use it for pictures, we use it for music, we use it for all these things that we didn't think of our arithmetic. So what's the consequence of extraordinarily cheap prediction? It means that, well, a lot of the first applications are going to be good old-fashioned prediction. Like uh, your insurance company might use it to figure out how to price your insurance. Which I uh, don't want, but anyway, okay. yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But some of us do. Yes. And uh, but over time, we're going to realize that there's a whole bunch of things that you might not think of as prediction that are really can be reframed as prediction, like medical diagnosis. In some sense, is prediction. The doctor's taking information about the symptoms that you have and predicting, filling in missing information about what's wrong with you. And once we, as prediction gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, we're going to find all these new applications for prediction that we might not have thought of before. One thing that I, I think I alluded to was when we talked about um, Amazon, I think, which you know, is probably one of the leaders in, in, in doing this. And um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm give a little hint in the next question, too, because you talk about data being the new oil, and they have lots of it. They do. Uh, but what is, what's an example of how Amazon is using AI right now? So Amazon's using AI all over the place. But one of the places they're using it is the recommendations. So if you go to Amazon, and on the first page, there's going to be a list of, here's some things you might want to buy. How does that, where did that come from? That's a prediction about what, you, what they think you're going to buy. That's, that's an AI. And it's, it's not bad. You think about it, Amazon has millions and millions and millions of products. And they might recommend 20 to you over the course of a couple of days. And at least from my experience, they're going to buy something like, I'll buy something like one of those 20. It was actually so, really high. So that's, that's pretty good when you yeah. think about these millions of products. Yeah. And so, but there's all sorts of different places that Amazon's using AI to just make their operations better. But, but over time, if you think about it, if their predictions really get good, then Amazon can actually do something completely different. And so what, if Amazon knows really what you want, maybe not 100%, but 90% or 80%, they know what you want before you've even ordered it, they could just ship it to your door. They could say, you know what, I know what you want. We'll ship it to your door. You can open the box at your door, take the things you want, leave the box there. And then Amazon would have to create a whole new infrastructure for getting those returns. And, uh, I don't know if they're really going to do that or not, or how it's going to play out. But mm -hmm. they have thought about it in the sense that they have a patent for something called anticipatory shipping, which is pretty close to what I just described. And I guess, that, to your point earlier, is just because the economics now work, it's worthwhile for them to be right some of the time. Yeah. Uh, and that way, the infrastructure makes it. But that just changes our behavior, it changes businesses, changes models, changes Absolutely. everything. Absolutely. So if you think about what's prediction really for, it's about helping us make decisions when there's uncertainty. and. There's a lot of things we do just because of uncertainty. Think about, um, think about going to the airport. Okay, so sometimes you go to the airport, and uh, you're early for your flight. And if you're a frequent flyer, you go to the airport lounge. And you have a more convenient place, a nicer place to sit and wait for your flight. But why do you have an airport lounge? Would you really want to be in the airport lounge? No, you only have an airport lounge because you had a bad prediction about how long it was going to take to get to the airport. 
and how long it would take to get through security. If you knew how long, no airport lounge. We don't right. need it. Yeah, you would just be much more efficient in getting there and doing what you're going to do. I've only got a minute here, and I do apologize for that. I wish we had more time. But um, the one thing people want to know, I think, sometimes, is will we become obsolete? Uh, and you actually say in here, and I, this phrase really stood out for me, you did talk about the possibility we could have an AI-induced recession. Yes. So in the long run, if this technology holds the promise that it seems to, the long run is, is rosy. The long run, it's going to make us wealthier, and we'll have all sorts of opportunities. But that doesn't mean in the long run, it could be a long time. And so in the short run, we could have um, you know, an industry that's suddenly decimated because a lot of jobs are replaced by AI. So whether it's uh, the automotive industry or the finance industry, you can imagine that would lead to an Ontario-based AI recession if suddenly the leading companies realize that they can automate what they're doing quickly. Um, 10 seconds, I'm curious. Okay. Do you think people are prepared for the world that AI is coming? Do you think, do you think people, like the, the masses understand what this is? Uh, I don't think they need to. I think they, what they need to do is understand you know, the incentives around them and you know, keep, understand that they need to keep learning and keep understanding and keep taking advantage of technology. But you know, for most of us, just like we don't, didn't really need a deep understanding of what the internet meant in 1995, yeah. I don't think most of us need a deep understanding of what AI means in 2018. Very interesting. Avi, thank you so much. Thank you. Avi Goldfarb, he is, uh, of course, uh, the, one of the co-authors of the book, Prediction Machines, The Simple Economics of Artificial Intelligence. Thank you for joining us tonight. Do you have any comments or questions on anything you've seen? If you want someone to take a quick look at your portfolio, you have some planning questions, please email me at moneytalk at td.com. I will get you in touch with someone who can answer all those questions for you. Thanks so much, and we hope to see you again next week.